In this lecture, I'll talk about the regulation of blood glucose levels. Glucose, it can be utilized as a source of energy by all cell types which are present in the body. It is oxidized to carbon dioxide and water by glycolysis and the TCA cycle, which provides the cell with ATP, which can be used for the other reactions. Well, the body maintains glucose levels in the bloodstream within a very narrow range and this is maintained by the help of two hormones that is glucagon and insulin. The excess of glucose is stored in animal cells as glycogen which is a large branched polymer composed of glucose monomers which are linked through the glycosidic bonds. The hormone glucagon is produced by the alpha cells of the pancreas in response to low blood glucose levels. Glucagon it stimulates the breakdown of glycogen and release of glucose into the bloodstream, thereby causing glucose levels to rise. The hormone insulin it is produced by the beta cells of the pancreas in response to high glucose level and it stimulates the glucose uptake and storage as glycogen. Finally, epinephrine which is also called as the fight or the flight hormone, this is, also, this is produced by the adrenal glands in, uh, in the stressful situations and epinephrine it causes an increase in blood glucose levels to provide the body with the extra energy resources which are needed to deal with the stressful situations. And insulin it acts through a receptor, a different receptor which is called as the protein tyrosine kinase. Insulin binds to the re receptor protein tyrosine kinase and the there is a complete cascade of reactions and finally it leads to the uh, storage of the glucose into the, into the glycogen. Well, the glucagon and epinephrine, they act by binding to GPCRs. Glucagon is a small protein which is composed of about 29 amino acids whereas epinephrine is a small molecule which is derived from the amino acid tyrosine. Although structurally these two molecules they have nothing in common but yet both of them they bind to GPCR to stimulate the breakdown of glycogen into glucose 1-phosphate. In addition the binding of either of these hormones it leads to the inhibition of the enzyme glycogen synthase which catalyzes the opposing reaction in which glucose units are added to growing glycogen molecules. Well, these two different stimuli, that's glucagon and epinephrine, they are recognized by different receptors, but they induce the same response in a single target cell. The two receptors differ from one another primarily in the structure of the ligand binding pocket on the extracellular surface of the cell, which is specific for one or the other hormone. Well, following the activation by the respective ligands, both receptors, they activate the same type of heterotimeric G protein, which causes an increase in the level of cyclic AMP. The cyclic AMP evokes a response that leads to glucose mo mobilization by initiating a chain of reactions. Once cyclic AMP is formed, this molecule it diffuses into the cytoplasm where it binds to an allosteric site on the regulatory subunit of cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase. In the inactive form, this cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase commonly called as protein kinase A or PKA, it is a heterotetramer which is composed of two regulatory subunits and two catalytic C subunits. The regulatory subunits, they normally inhibit the catalytic activity of the enzyme cyclic AMP binding. Cyclic AMP binding, it causes the dissociation of the regulatory subunits, thereby releasing the active catalytic subunits of PKA. The target substrates for of PKA in a liver cell, it includes two enzymes that play a central role in glucose metabolism. 
One is glycogen synthase and the other is phosphorylase kinase. Phosphorylation of glycogen synthase, it inhibits its catalytic activity and thus prevents the conversion of glucose to glycogen. And in contrast to this, the phosphorylation of phosphorylase kinase, it activates the enzyme to catalyze the transfer of phosphate groups to glycogen phosphorylase molecules. Glycogen phosphorylase, uh, this active form of glycogen phosphorylase stimulates the breakdown of glycogen to glucose 1-phosphate. The glucose 1-phosphate formed in the reaction is then converted to glucose which diffuses into the bloodstream so as to reach the other tissues of the body. Well, I have just discussed that how the formation of the cyclic AMP and activation of protein kinase A and then phosphorylation of glycogen synthase which gets inhibited. So, the inhibition, there is inhibition of the synthesis of glycogen in response to the formation of cyclic AMP and the glycogen phosphorylase which gets activated which stimulates the breakdown of glycogen into glucose 1-phosphate and that is in response to cyclic AMP. Well, as one might expect, a mechanism must exist to reverse the steps also. So, the cell, uh, if this would not happen, the cell would remain in the activated state indefinitely. The liver cells, they contain phosphatases which remove the phosphate groups added by the kinases. A particular member of this family of enzyme is protein phosphatase 1, which can remove the phosphates from all the phosphorylated enzymes, phosphorylase kinase, glycogen synthase and glycogen phosphorylase. So the destruction of cyclic AMP molecules present in the cell is accomplished by the enzyme cyclic AMP phosphodiesterase which help in the terminating the response. In this kind of signaling mechanism, there is always a signal amplification. The binding of a single hormone molecule at the cell surface, it can activate a number of G proteins, each of which can activate an anidinyl cyclase effector, each of which can produce a large number of cyclic AMP messenger, which is also called as the second messenger in a very short period of time. Thus, the production of a second messenger that provides a mechanism to greatly amplify the signal generated from the original message. Many of the steps in this reaction cascade, they uh, result in amplification of the signal. Cyclic AMP molecules activate PKA. Each PKA catalytic subunit phosphorylates a large number of phosphorylase kinase molecules, which in turn phosphorylate an even larger number of glycogen phosphorylase molecules which in turn can catalyze the formation of much larger number of glucose phosphates. Thus, what begins as a, uh, as a small uh, stimulus at the cell surface is rapidly transformed into a major, major mobilization of glucose within the cell. Well, the production of cyclic AMP, it not only helps in the phosphorylation processes, but there are other effects of the there are other aspects of the cyclic AMP signal transduction pathways also. Although the most rapid and the best studied effects of cyclic AMP are produced in the cytoplasm, but the nucleus and its genes also part participate in this response. A fraction of the activated PKA molecule they translocate into the nucleus where they phosphorylate key number of the uh, uh, proteins and those are the transcriptional factors which are called as the CREB. CREB stands for cyclic AMP response element binding proteins. The phosphorylated version of CREB, it binds as a dimer to sites on the DNA containing a particular nucleotide sequence which is also known as the cyclic AMP response elements or commonly called as CRE. These response elements are sites in the DNA where transcription factors bind and increase the rate of initiation of transcription. CREs are located in the regulatory regions of genes that play a role in the response to cyclic AMP. 
In liver cells, several of these enzymes involved in gluconeogenesis, a pathway by which glucose is formed from the intermediates of glycolysis, are encoded by genes which contain nearby C. Thus, epinephrine and glucagon not only activate catabolic enzymes involved in glycogen breakdown, but they promote the synthesis of anabolic enzymes required to synthesize glucose from smaller precursors.